Hi there, welcome back to the channel. And yes, welcome to another project. This one is one that's going to put a lot of you off. It's all SMD. Now, why would I do an SMD project, you may ask? Well, if you saw the uh, video on the uh, Brown SK25, I did this project. And this here is a Bluetooth module that is actually linked through the uh, Phono uh, socket. And the reason for that is I had no space inside and I needed to make this as small as possible. So I figured, well, how much smaller can you get than SMD? And SMD presents a lot of challenges for me as it does to a lot of you because soldering these little guys is not fun. Now, when I did this one, I did everything with a soldering iron, very fine tipped, and it was not easy, especially some of these uh, electrolytic capacitors on here. And I was almost completely put off this board until I decided to try something. You see, I've always wanted to try reflow soldering and I don't have the equipment for it. I don't want to get the equipment for it. Somebody's actually offered me an oven and I refused it. I refuse a lot of stuff they offer because if I'm not going to use it, it's just going to take up space that I don't really have. So I don't accept them. But I decided to try something which uh, I'd seen others do and which anybody can do. And that is to do this on a stovetop. So this thing was built in a kitchen, or will be built in a kitchen, with my wife absent, obviously. I might be crazy, but I'm not stupid. So when I ordered the boards, I ordered a mask as well. This is very, very fine steel, I think, well, aluminium, and it's got all the cutouts. And the idea is that you put some solder paste on there, you spread it with a card or a squidgy, whatever you want to call those things. And obviously that's with the board on the underside. And because these little holes match exactly to the solder pads that you've got on here, you get solder or solder paste only on those pads. And I thought, yeah, it's not going to work. But I thought, let me give it a try. And I did. And the results <laughs> were bloody amazing. <laughs> I still laugh because I can't believe how this thing came out. Let me tell you how I did this. Before I start, I want to thank PCBWay for the uh, boards. They're sponsoring the video. Thank you very much, PCBWay. And to start off, I got some boards that uh, I'd ordered in the past, also from PCBWay. And I used these to firmly fix the board to my workspace so that it wouldn't shift when I put the mask on and started pulling the, the solder paste on it. The mask is then carefully placed on the board so that it meets the holes. The holes match exactly with what you're seeing through the mask. And then I put some solder paste, just the cheapest stuff I could find. I put a bit of it on the top and I started pulling it down with a credit card and you can use a squidgy or whatever they use. And just make sure that you scrape it very, very hard so that the holes are fully filled, but there's not an excessive amount of paste. And you can see that when you look at the mask afterwards, like you see now. Then you remove the mask and you're left with this board that's got little squares or rectangles or blobs of solder where it's supposed to be. And it really is quite amazing. It comes out very, very fine. And then you just put your components on. And it's a bit disconcerting because when you put something like the SMD uh, op amp, it looks like all the, uh, the legs are blobbed together with solder. But that doesn't matter because the uh, capillary action will pull the solder to the pins and you will normally not get any short circuits on there. One of the most difficult tasks is going through the components because there's a lot of components and you've got to make sure that you get the polarities right in the case of diodes or capacitors and put them in one at a time very carefully, make sure you get it right and then you're ready for the kitchen. And this is the part that I wasn't sure about, but as it turns out, it works very well. I put the board on an old frying pan. It's one of those with a very thick base and switched on the oven to medium heat. And then I checked the temperature and I noticed that it goes up to about 120, 130 degrees. And um, I left it there for a while and then I put it up a little bit further. I was sort of trying to emulate the, the curve that they tell you you're supposed to follow. And uh, when I felt that everything was suitably warmed up to the right temperature, to the same temperature, I zapped it with a maximum temperature for about three, four minutes. And I just saw this thing fall into place. Everything just fell into place. And as soon as I saw that, because I knew this thing would retain heat for a while, I switched the stove off and slowly or carefully pulled the frying pan off the stove. And I was doing this and didn't take many photos because I was nervous as hell. And, um, and the result is fantastic. I didn't have one component tombstone on me or rip off or slip off or pop off. It just works. It just works. And my wife doesn't know about it. That's the most amazing part. 
and here we are. The only components I had to solder after the uh, SMD experience on the stove were the DC to DC converter over there and the relay, so that's all done. And I've also soldered the wires, so this is an audio cable. I've just got ground and one phase because this is a mono system, so that goes off here. Here I've got the plus six, not plus 6.3, the 6.3 volts and the chassis ground. And this red one is going to come from the Magic Eye signal. Now, I've built this with two different modules in mind. I've put these spaces in place so this thing just fits in there. Uh, come on, come on, come on. Well, it will fit in there. Like that. And then I just solder it in place. Okay. But I've also made this for another module. And the reason is I found this module, which I actually bought in Madeira, but it's available everywhere on the web. And I think this is actually a more advanced version of Bluetooth, which I want to try sometime. It's this guy over here. Now this thing's available just about everywhere. This thing is labeled Bluetooth 5.0. Uh, I think this one says 4.2, but I haven't tried this yet and I probably won't try this this time. But the way this is done is that this module, if you see the board has got a, an outline there, this module will fit like that. Okay. So the supply pins, instead of being down here, will be there and they'll fit in there and solder in place. And then all I need to do is I need to bring the audio signal, the left, the right and the ground to these points over here. I didn't want to put another set of pins over here because, um, actually I can't, oh, because this thing hasn't got holes on it. It doesn't actually have holes on it. It's just these little pads and it's easy enough to solder three little links to this point over here. So this will be for the next or some other time, but ultimately I wanted to show you what this thing looks like. Now, I've got to tell you, this is not a change to my version six that I published. I still will be using that. This is more a continuation of uh, my experiment with uh, the one I did for the SK25. I wanted to see how easy it was to do the uh, surface mount. But let me tell you what I'm going to do here. I'm going to put these boards up on PCBWay as well. And I'll put the link down below. And in that link, when you go to that page, you will be able to download the schematic and the bill of materials with all the references. I've used Mauser. And it's just easier for me because um, I tend to order everything from one place. It's a lot easier. So all the components on here will be listed exactly as I've used them. And um, I'll be putting that there as well. It might not go on straight away, but it will be there as well. So you're welcome to do whatever you like. If you want to use the, um, the previous version, the, the through-hole version, by all means. If you want to experiment with this version, by all means. As I said, this was an experiment to see if I could do the reflow soldering. I don't even think it's called reflow soldering when you do it on a on an old frying pan, <laughs> albeit a crozette frying pan. My wife went nuts. She found out about it and she reminded me that those pans cost a fortune. Well, they're worth the weight in gold because this thing worked out very, very well. I tested connections on here because I was a little bit a little bit suspect about some of the um, the uh, electrolytics, I wasn't sure that the soldering had worked, but it works perfectly. It's all the connections are made, all the resistances that I measured without this thing being powered on were made. So all I need to do is put this in a case. And this is the next thing I want to tell you. I'm going to make the case available. This is the case for this, okay, for this one. And uh, the way it's done, it's got three, four little protrusions on there where these guys fit into. And then this thing here, the hole is where it comes out of. And then there's a lid with the logo. Yep. And I'll make these files available, these print files available on my, um, on my Google Drive. And I'll put the link down below as well. So if you want, you can print that out as well. Anyway, it's just trying to make this as self-contained as possible because I know a lot of you ask questions. Sometimes I don't have the time to respond or send files and all sorts of stuff. I do try to um, answer your requests. Sometimes I just don't have the time. And I want to make this as easy for you as possible. If you want to go ahead and do something like this, you're doing it at your own risk. Be careful. And um, on the schematic, there are a few warnings, things like the polarity of the 
Uh, 6.3 volts is important, which sounds a bit strange. It's AC after all, but it's important that you connect the right ground pin to the right connection on here. So you can't, you shouldn't get that mixed up or the supply won't work for the op amp. That's all explained on the schematic and also on the video that um, I did on the schematic originally. Now this thing fits, I'm trying to just get this through. Those wires are a bit stiff, but it does fit. And it'll just click in there. Will you click in there? Yes. There we go. It's clicked in there. All right. Now I just put, I can't finish. I haven't finished this because I haven't soldered those uh, pins on this side yet. But this is what this is going to look like. Just clicks in place. You can still open it. And these wires will go off, as I mentioned before. Uh, 6.3 volts is this one over here. Zero volts from the heater supply is this one over here. This one here is the uh, high voltage from the magic eye, which will switch this off when you've got radio connected. And of course, the audio goes to the phono input. So that is it. And I'm not even going to show you this tested because you've seen it before, probably a few times too many. But this is it. This is the way this thing is going to go. And um, as I said, the next one, I might use the, the other board. I've got quite a few of the other boards. I've got um, quite a few of these boards, so I can really sort of alternate between them. The other thing is I bought uh, multiples of the components that I need for this. So I'm ready to do one of these whenever I like and uh, whenever I've got access to that frying pan again. <laughs> and now I'm a bit uh, superstitious. I'm going to use the same frying pan every time because it works. And uh, other times I'll just use the, the through hole because it is a lot easier for me to just solder one in a hurry. I think what I'll probably do is I'll make a few of these in series, you know, keep them ready made when I need them for my radios. But anyway, if you do want to see this thing in operation, keep following the series I'm doing on the Brown TS2. That thing has got some amazing speakers. It's going to provide some amazing sound. And uh, I definitely, definitely will be putting Bluetooth on there because it's made for Bluetooth. That kind of uh, speaker system is ideal for Bluetooth because the sound is amazing. So. That's what I'm going to leave you for now. And uh, I want to thank PCBWay for the sponsorship. Thank you for your attention and your kind comments. And uh, I do hope you've enjoyed that. And if you have, don't forget to click like, share, subscribe, and all that jazz. And if you want to support the channel directly, you can certainly do that on Patreon and PayPal. Once again, thanks for watching. Bye for now. And most of all, stay safe.